When I was a kid, our family would take vacations to New Hampshire. And my dad had a thing for the beauty of the mountains up there. And one of the most striking things I remember as a child was seeing the old man of the mountain. Those of you who have seen it know exactly what I'm talking about. And for those of you who haven't, here is a picture. Nestled in the side of Cannon Mountain in Franconia, New Hampshire, was this awe-inspiring arrangement of five granite cliff ledges that, when viewed from the north, looked exactly like the profile of a human face, a face looking out over the countryside of New England. It was pure magic to see this as a child, and to think now of the generations of children who had seen it before me fills me with an overwhelming sense of context and continuity. But in 2003, despite ongoing efforts over decades to keep the great stone face structure intact, thousands of years of weathering, freezing, and thawing ultimately led to the collapse of the face. And suddenly, it was no more. I remember when I heard about this, I was actually shocked and saddened. It felt like a part of my childhood had disappeared. But I had come to learn that the magic was not limited to that stern and proud face, that the magic was in the rocks themselves. Though the face had given people the focus and impetus to believe that the old man of the mountain had witnessed everything that had happened there for tens of thousands of years, the essential truth is that all of the stone and the rock around this face had been there too, bearing witness to the changing seasons and generations of people passing through. The power of a stone's permanence and strength. It has inspired humankind from the very beginning. We have used stones for generations to build our homes, to build our worship spaces, and we've used stones to serve as monuments and memorials for those who are no longer with us, those we revere and love, with the hope that their memories endure for millennia just as the stones do. It turns out that stones also have magical powers in our Torah portion this week, Vayetze. When Jacob sets out for Haran, he finds that the sun is setting a little faster than he had planned. Having brought nothing for an overnight stay, he collects some stones to put under his head to serve as a pillow. I know, not the most comfortable sounding thing but he did what he could do. A midrash explains what happened next. That night, the rocks argue with each other as to who will be the lucky stone to support this righteous man's head. God heard their arguing and immediately merges them into one single rock so that they could all partake in giving Jacob a place to rest his head. After Jacob wakes up from his famous dream with the ladder of angels, angels stretching to the sky and the promise from God that he will be the father of a great nation, Jacob takes the single rock that was under his head and sets it up as a monument. He pours oil over it. He names it as a house of God, and he vows to share everything that is his with God. The stone's permanence and strength would serve as a symbol not only for Jacob's dedication to God, but for the generations of God's followers that was promised to Jacob just the night before. And here we are. The monument that Jacob made thousands of years ago surely will never be found, or maybe it didn't even exist in the way that we read about, but that doesn't matter. The stones in that place are still there. They have been there for millions of years before Jacob and will be there millions of years after us. And that is the hope 
of God's promise to Jacob, permanence and strength. So there's a legend from the Abenaki, the indigenous peoples of the Northeast, about this old man of the mountain. They say that a person named Nis Kizos had fallen in love with a Haudenosaunee woman named Tarlo. Tarlo had to return to her village because her people were stricken by a great sickness. Nis Kizos promised his love, Tarlo, that he would live at the top of a mountain to look out for her and would light a fire to guide her back to him when she was ready to return. Unfortunately, Tarlo succumbed to the sickness and died. Nis Kizos' brother was tasked with going up the mountain to find his brother and to deliver the terrible news. But when he, met, when he went up, there was no sign of Nis Kizos. He couldn't find his brother. He wasn't up there on the mountain. So his brother went down. However, it was on his descent that when he looked back, he had found that his brother had become part of the mountain so that he could look after the land. When the stone face collapsed in 2003, the current generation of Abenaki added to this legend, saying that Nis Kizos had finally been reunited with his love, Tarlo. We are a people who desperately searches for meaning. Yes, even in the rocks around us. We are a people who strives to leave a little bit of ourselves behind after our bodies perish. And we honor those who came before us by making their memories last. When we look at the work of God, whether it be in a perfect lifelike face on a mountain or just a stone that's millions of years old, we see that permanence. We see that beauty of creation. And we desire to partake in a little bit of that magic which seems to transcend time.